Hello and welcome to the another video tutorial from Vishwas Coaching. My name is Vishwana Chaudhary, your online instructor. So today I'm going to discuss about the differences between the structure of euchromatin and heterochromatin. So as you know, the chromatin structure is made up of DNA and protein. And I have told that during the interphase of a cell, the DNA is or the chromosome is loosely packed or loosely bounded. That is why the structures is something like noodle like structure or thread like structure. So this is suppose the interface of a cell and this is the nucleolus as you know inside this nucleus there is one nucleolus but you have to understand this thing the nucleolus does not contain any DNA part or the chromosomal part. So chromosome present in the nucleoplasm of the nucleus. Okay so this is the Suppose this is the DNA part or the chromosomal part and along with this thing you can see under the microscope there is also so after staining this after staining the uh, chromosome you can find something in the structure something like this okay. so before explaining this thing, let me tell you one thing that you chromatin, so chromatin structure is made up of, chromatin structure is made up of, you chromatin and heterochromatin. heterochromatin. So what is you chromatin and what is heterochromatin? So, euchromatin is a part of the chromosome or, is, or the part of the DNA which actually active part is the active part of DNA active so what is the active part mostly the genic part you know the gene is the active side of the DNA which produces a functional molecule for our body like any RNA structure or any protein okay so active means genic region genic region and heterochromatin is inactive. Inactive. That means non gene. Non gene. Okay. So, as you can understand this thing, this is lightly stained, that is why it is loosely bound. Sorry, this is loosely bound, that is why it is lightly stained. And this is condensely bound, that is why they are darkly stained. Because Condensed structure retain more color, more stains. A loosely packed structure will retain less color. So this is the loosely packed structure is the euchromatic part. This is the euchromatic part. And this is the heterochromatic, heterochromatic part. So why this is loosely packed? Because as I have told before in my in my previous class that during interface DNA is open to transcribe, open to transcript for the transcription and the translation procedure. So, if DNA will not get separated or loose enough, the RNA polymerase or the transcription transcriptor factors, transcription factors will not get access to the DNA part, the active region of the DNA part. But this is the density pack. Why it is densely packed? Because this is non-genic part or inactive part. So that the RNA polymerase or any other transcription factor will not get access to this part. Because it is not required. This is inactive part. It will try to condense the structure always. Okay. So active part lose it fine because of the because to get the access. To get the access by RNA polymerase. Okay. Now you can see this heterochromatic part is always try to stay towards the periphery or towards the envelope of the nucleus. Why is it so? Because RNA polymerase or any other enzyme will try to come to this part, to the nucleoplasm part, not towards the periphery. So if someone just stick to the wall, so nobody can get access to the to the total area of that person. So, 
it is also stick towards the envelope so that it will not get accessed by any polymerase of any active enzymes. Okay, so that is why they try they will stick to the envelope. Okay, now chromatic part the region of the chromatic is nine more than ninety percent. So there is one confusion may arise like I have told that genic part of the DNA is only two to two point five percent. Now I am telling that ninety percent of the euchromat ninety percent of the region is a euchromatic region where the genic part is present. So here I am telling two point five percent and here I am telling ninety percent. How is that possible? Okay, let me give you one example. That suppose this is one DNA strand. The length of the DNA is suppose thousand, thousand nuclear. Okay. Now I am segment. I am trying to segment this DNA into four. So this is two fifty. This is another two fifty. There is two fifty nucleotide from two fifty one to five hundred nucleotide. Again five hundred to seven fifty, and from seven fifty to thousand. Okay. Now if I say this part is only nucleotide. This part is only and from this part to that part is polymerase. Okay. So as you can see, more DNA is present in the heterochromatic region that is 750 nucleotide, and only 250 nucleotide is euchromatic. But if I construct this structure in this manner, suppose this part, the total 750 is arranged something like this, coiled, super coiled structure, and this 250 is present in something like this. Then you can see the area covered by this 750 nucleotide is suppose 20%. And the area covered by this 250 only, suppose 80 percent. So as you can see, there is involvement of more DNA. It is true, but the area covered by this part is only 20 percent. But this part, which is loosely packed, it is covered more than 80 percent. Okay, so that is why the euchromatic region is more than 90 percent. But More DNA is involved in heterochromatic region because more DNA is the non-genic part. Okay, genic part. We all know DNA is double helical structure, and A if I consider A from one strand is bonded with T, and if I consider T of one strand is bonded with C, but there is three hydrogen bonding between G and C and two hydrogen bonding between A and T. Now, if I if I say that it is by convention, it is true that GC percentage of GC percentage of guanosine and cytosine in the genic part is higher than the percentage of GC in the non-genic part. This is the genic part. Okay. So, if there is any gene, the presence of GC nucleotide is more than the non-genic part. Why is it so? Because Gene part is the active and functional part of DNA. It has to be maintained precisely. So, as you can see, there is three hydrogen bond. So, it is stronger than these two hydrogen bonded structure. So, always gene gene will try to become stronger so that it will not get separated very easily. Okay, that is why gene part consists of GC rich with. Okay, now it is one thing I have told you. Now, if I consider only heterochromatin, heterochromatin also made up of constitutive, constitutive, and facultative. There is also differences between constitutive and facultative because. If you consider the properties of heterochromatin, you can say it is condensed packed, 
one properties and two properties, second property is it is, it is non genic point. But if I consider the facultative ketochromatin, first property is true for this facultative ketochromatin, that is, it is condensed with that. But second property of this heterochromatic region is false for this facultative region. Why? Because it is gene rich region as well, it can contain, it may contain the genic part, but due to their condensed structure, RNA polymerase or any transcription, transcription factors do not get access to this part of the heterochromatic, but they are dynamic in nature, dynamic. Why they are dynamic? Because some phases of life or some phases of cell cycle this will behave like faculty uh, behave like heterochromatin and some phases of the cell cycle of, of or some phases of the life this will become duchromatin this will become duchromatin as well by some histone modifications and all I will discuss all this thing in my epigenetic class so this is Dynamic and constitutive is total inactive region. So, this is static, total inactive. There is no such genes present, but there may be the presence of G. Okay, I hope you like this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe my channel and to share with your friends so that they can also understand the basic things of the